Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. All right, and we back on the main event podcast, man. Make sure y'all like and subscribe as we continue to bring you nothing but the best inside and outside the sport of boxing. I'm your host, Tawan Butler. Y'all right on for hanging out with me. I got none other than a good friend of mine. He ain't only but uh, he ain't only a good ass fighter, but he a good friend of mine. His trainer is a great friend of mine. I want to welcome to the platform, Mr. Ryan Allen. Yes, sir. What's up, man? Yes, sir, you know man. what I'm saying? One of the best out there at 126. Yes, you feel me? What about 130? 130? Uh, 122. 122. 122. 122. Okay, yes, I'll put sir. four more pounds on the homie. I didn't <laughs> mean to do that. 122. But, man, uh, I brought you right here, man. I just want to dive right in, man, yes, because uh, it was a clip of, It was a clip out there on social media. Yeah. You, you was fighting uh, in the Team Combat League. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was your opponent's name? I, I don't want to mess up his uh, name. Tremaine Williams. Tremaine Williams. Yo, this is scary as hell. I just watched this live. So watch Tremaine Williams in the green from New York. Just freezes. Oh my God, that is scary as hell. Take me, let's just dive right, because the people want to know, man. Take me. Up until that day, man. How how was your day going that day? How was uh, the weigh-ins? How was everything uh, prior to everything the event? Everything was cool with me, man. I, um, me and my boy, we drove in. We usually fly in, but we we drove from Vegas uh, to L.A., man. We fought at the Thunder Studio in L.A. Um, everything seemed good, man. Uh, he didn't make weight, but he didn't seem like he was um, – you know, anything was off to me. Um, you know, usually I see him more like ripped up. You know what I'm saying? Because this is my boy. I grew up with Tremaine Williams. Oh, you know the guy. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, we was, okay, sure. was kind of like in the same, the same amateur class. So he was he was a beast, man. He was he used to win everything, man. He used to he was national champion, and, and, and he he used to be winning the tournaments, man. And um, uh, so I'm just very familiar with him, man, and. and I consider him just a, you know, not like everyday talking friend, but like every time he was fighting on TV, man, I shoot him a message, man, like, For sure. you know, supporting him. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fan of guys even I could possibly fight. Right. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. So, you know, um, my everything was normal, man. I, I felt, I felt good, man. The day of the fight, I felt okay. You know, you don't always feel good when you, you right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Nobody's ever a hundred. Yeah, you push through it. It pushed push through, through it for, yeah, sure. for sure, for sure, man. But you know, right when I get in the ring, man, that everything just go away. I don't know what it be, man. I don't know if that's something that God just gave me. But yeah. as soon as I step through them ropes, man, it's just like all right, it's 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 on, man. So and, uh, you step through the ropes. It was round one, right? You yep. cracked off the fight. You yeah, cracked off yep. the fight. Y'all was the first round. So when you when you hear that bell ring, man, take me. Take man. that bell ring and you in there, you just doing your man, thing. Yeah, I'm just you know doing my saying? thing, just man. Relive it for me, yeah, man, for the I, people. I'm doing my thing, man. Um, Team Combat League is something, you know, I'm not looking at it as a real fight, man. So I'm like, man, I'm going against my boy. I don't want to cut him. I don't want to really, I don't want to knock him out. Bro, that's just literally how I was feeling because it's like, it's Team Combat League. It's not. We can't be world champion from this. We not. We really just doing this to stay active stay as active. fighters, man. Because right. we, you know. So I go in there, man. But I'm gonna work. I, I'm. I seen our fight as all right. This is gonna be like intense sparring, but with no headgear. You know what I'm saying? So right. if I buzz him or something, literally, that's literally how I was thinking. Like if I buzz him or something, I'm gonna. Let, I'm not gonna stop him. You feel what I'm saying? I don't. I'm not getting nothing out of it, man. This is not no world title fight. I just want to do my round and get out. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And um, man, we was working. Man, he caught me with some shots, as you can see in the in the round, man. And um, I did land a couple uh temple shots. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't really, you know, it's just we just going. Mixing you know what I'm it up. Yeah, we mixing yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. We mixing it up, a man. Paid sparring session. A paid sparring session. That's exactly <laughs> what it is, For man. Sure. So, sure. I a lot of people don't know if they go back and watch our round, man. It was actually the punch that I hit him with about 10, 15 seconds before he even had the episode. So 
Um, I caught him with a real good temple shot, man. That probably what started whatever what happened. And then, you know what I'm saying, um, I'm coming in to get him to go into my right hand. I kept right. looping my left hook. So I looped my left hook. So he can, I knew he was going to dip down into my right hand. So I looped it, and then I just shot the right hand, man. And I did see I buzzed him a little bit, you know what I'm saying, because I seen him, like, stumble back. And then it happened. It happened. It happened. It happened. I'm like. Because if I could go back, you know what I'm saying, when I was watching it, you know, I was, okay, it looked like you probably hit him in the shoulder, maybe, mm -hmm. you feel me? And then he backed up because I was mm -hmm. like, okay, maybe hit him in the shoulder, mm -hmm. maybe locked up a nerve or yeah, something or homie, yeah. anything. You feel me? But what a lot of people was praising you for, bro, and y'all good peoples too because everybody out there know good people when they see them, is that they praise you for not cleaning that man's yeah. clock, bro. Yeah. Because a, a, a lot of people, a lot of fighters in that situation, mm. they just try to make a name for themselves. Exactly. Like, you feel exactly. me? It's like whooping on a midget. It's exactly. Like, man, I know I could have cleaned yeah. this dude's yeah. clock, but you as exactly. a professional was like, hold yeah. up. Some, yeah. ain't, some ain't right with this yeah. dude. You feel me? You was yeah. uh, like, you've been around the sport so long. Yeah, I threw that, I said, I threw that loop and left. Boom, oh, so he could drop into it. Boom, um, mm, right on the, yeah. So you did hit him. Yeah. He was wobbled right there mm -hmm. a little bit, too. Yeah, you see him stumble back. And then he froze. Mm -hmm. But right here, you noticed something was wrong, though. Yeah, absolutely. What, what, what was you thinking in your mind before he caught? Uh, you, before he went to go throw, you knew something was wrong. I seen well, it in it, your eyes. It looks like he was trying to show, like, showboat a little bit. I'm like, but why would he do that? And right, right. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it was it was crazy because everybody thought he was playing. I did for a slight second, but then when I looked at it, I see his face start turning. I'm like, hold up. That, that ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then it, it's really, on my end, it's really high IQ. You know what I'm saying? Like, if my IQ wasn't as high, like, I even had some teammates saying, like, I thank God it wasn't me fighting him because I would have took off on him. He would have been gone. <laughs> But, gone. That's the thing, bro. In the comments, man, all, all the motherfuckers said, like, I don't know if you read them, but everybody was saying, oh, praise that brother. He's a good brother. Uh, he could have cleaned his clock, but he didn't. Yeah. Uh, uh, Allen's a good sport. He was compassionate. Yeah. He prayed yeah. for that man. Yeah. He, did, You know what I'm saying? So just how does that make you feel that a, a situation like that, people see the good yeah. in you, even though something yeah. tragic happened? You know what I'm saying? How does that make man, you feel? It, it makes me feel good, man, because, you know, you know, they may look at us as fighters like, man, we're just all savages. Even though we are savages, man, right. but at the end of the day, what I always pray when I before I fight, I pray that me and my opponent go home to our family safe and in the same condition that we got in the ring as. You know, I don't want to cause no brain damage, eternal damage to somebody to where, you know, they can't move freely and, 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 and be – you know, how they was, man, you know, before even getting in the, you know, the fight with me, man. I don't, right. I just, you know, that, cause that's how I, well, I got children. So, you know, I would hate to be, you know, not okay. You know what I'm saying? So I, that's what I always pray for, just to keep me and my opponent safe. Right. You know, so. What was the exact cause of him uh, doing that? Did you ever find out? I never really found out. Some people say he had a seizure. Some people say it was he cut too much weight and didn't hydrate. Wasn't that? What you think? From it what was? I heard, man, I because I I fought dehydrated my whole career. You know, you got to cut weight. You know, I don't think it was dehydration. I'm not trying to, you know, really speak on his medical situation like that. But just me being a fighter who's not dehydrated, who's not all fighters, all are, fighters dehydrated. are dehydrated, and if that was the cause. A lot of people would have seizures, you know? So I don't think it was, man. I think it's something else. You um, think it was that punch you hit him with that people absolutely, didn't Absolutely. You know, because when I just fought in California. All right. Now, we was talking, uh, we were speaking about the homie that that, mm -hmm. uh, that passed away yes, sir. in the fight. And you said they tried to sweep it under the rug. Absolutely. For what, why do you think they tried to sweep it under the rug? I to mean, keep the team combat league going? Good? Yeah, they want to probably try to save their company, man, or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, uh, when you when fighters when fighters are in training, you know when you do a uh, 
a boxing application before a fight. They ask you, you've been hurt, injured, anything in right. a fight. Do you have this, that, whatever, you know. Um, I just think, you know, he didn't speak English really good. He's from Africa, and he, he was, I think he came from France. So I I, I think that um, somebody had to do his boxing application for him. He had got knocked out eight days before we left. Oh, wow. Damn. And I heard it was some more before that. So what does that mean? Your boxing application, somebody got a lie. Somebody lying. Yeah. Somebody got a lie. Come somebody, on now. You know? Somebody lying. Somebody somebody got a lie and say I wasn't hurt, I wasn't injured, I was fine, camp was good, this was good, I'm feeling okay. Of course, he going to say it. He, he trying to get paid. He 4,000 know? miles away from his children and his wife and his family in another country. He he, he want to get some type of money after just sitting and not getting paid like everybody else. So hey man, I didn't know uh, Team Combat League wasn't paying people, man. Nah, we didn't get paid good and nowhere near what we were supposed to get That's paid. That's crazy, bro. Because it seemed like the way they market it and they promote it, you know what I mean? It seemed like everybody get treated fairly, y'all traveling. Nah. Going out of town, all the nah. training clips. They making it look good. I wanted to come out and, and see a couple rounds, but damn, like that. Yeah. That's why I won't get approved in Nevada. They don't want that here. That's why y'all yeah, take exactly. it. Wow. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was wondering why you had to go to Yeah, just select few states to be like, all right, we'll do it. But Nevada is not one of them. I ain't going to let it yeah. ride? Nah. You know, Nevada's strict, man. The, absolutely. Nevada's one of the absolutely. strictest commissions outside of Cali and yeah. Texas. The, the Nevada's strict yeah. as hell. But there's one thing I do want to ask you about, and that's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that everybody fall victim to this in the sport of boxing. Mm -hmm. They they call it the short end of the stick yeah. or highway robbery. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's yes, one sir. of the two. And uh, I know you, you've been very outspoken about yes. How, how they felt that you was treated on some of these big promotion cards, knowing you beat some of these guys, but you didn't get denied because of who they invested in. Exactly. So talk to me about uh, uh, how do you know that that type of stuff is, is going on? Like, Man. How do you... uh, well, for the first time in my career, I found out that I was on the betting odds. So I feel like when you're on betting odds, man, it's people putting money on you. For sure. You know? And I was like plus twelve hundred in my last fight. Damn. Yeah, I was like, was that's crazy. Yeah, I didn't that's even good know. Money right I there. didn't even know. You know, I was that deep into my career that I could get bet on. So, you know, um, they're putting a lot of money behind these guys, man. And um, you know, they're not gonna lose it, man. Because now I went from you know being on the B side. You know, I'm beating them, of course. And I'm getting split decisions or majority decisions, you know what I'm saying, to now it's so bad now that they want the record to look so clean and good. Now they don't care how the fight went. Unanimous decision. I'm just like, what? I just fought last weekend. And Yeah, tell me about that experience, oh, man. man. Tell me about it. Because I heard the people in the crowd was like, uh, you won. Booing. Yeah, I heard that. Crazy, man. Uh, Despite how I was feeling, like I said, man, I had a hard weight cut, but I made the weight. Um, man, I just came at him, man. I said, look, I, I, I'm i going to press the action on this guy because I know if I'm sitting back trying to box and use my skill, no, that whatever, gonna that's not going to work. Yeah. They want to see me come at him, throw punches, you know what I'm saying? And that's exactly what I did. Came at him, man. I landed more, threw more, and I landed the better shots, and – they, a judge said I didn't win a round. Yeah. Had him sweeping me. You know what, Judge? I don't know what judge, but that's what I feel. You might have to say his name because they, they might be, have to go on might be the rate. same judge. Remember, they, uh, they might be the same judge with Canelo Fall Floyd. Yeah. And the judge called it a draw. What yeah. judge called it a draw? What the hell yeah. fight was you watching? Bro, that's what I'm saying. How you call that shit a draw? That's what I'm saying. You had that judge watching your fight. I I, I had to have, man. And what I think, <laughs> I think these judges are. Definitely getting paid off, or you nah, know, you think oh, so? Absolutely, come on now, absolutely, Ryan. come man. on, man. These judges need to be held accountable for what they doing, man. I, I really think before these judges even get to score a professional fight, they need to be tested. They need to watch certain fights, 
and let them have a score sheet and see how they score versus, you know what I'm saying, and why, and then do a whole questionnaire. Right. They they need to be interviewed as to, like, how, what did you see that make you think that this fighter even was even close to winning or, you know what I'm saying? So, so it, you think it was they bad. they envelopes before the fight starts? Absolutely. Absolutely. Make sure this guy don't – and they just got to pray and hope that he the A-side fight, he don't get knocked out, man. Because <laughs> I've, I've even dropped guys. They don't even count my knockdown. Get out of here. Yes. I've had – What I've, fight you drop a dude that ain't count the knockdown? Man, I, New York Barclay Center. Yeah, I, I think I was fighting uh, Kobe Abridi. Hit him with a left hook. He went down. They wiping his Slip. gloves off. I'm like, yo. Versus mine this past weekend, they said I got dropped. He he cuffs me in the back of my head. He's he southpaw. I'm orthodox. You know, yeah. my leg is behind his leg. He pushes me down. I'm thinking he's going to wipe me off. Referee, down. I'm like, yo. And then, because they wasn't even counting it. Like, you know how the, they point outside the ring right. to make sure they counting it. Right, and then the ref. He did it twice. Down. down. I'm like. She wasn't counting it because it wasn't a knockdown. Damn. And even though you can hear the commentators, I don't think it was a knockdown, man. And they talking so good about me from the Tremaine right. situation and stuff like that, man. It's just like it's somebody in their ear telling them, like, yo, you talking too good about this dude. Then they got to switch the verdict. You know what I'm saying? It's just like if a person is a good fighter, a person is a good fighter, man. You know, these – they they paying for everything, man. You can't talk too good about the, about the B side guy, man, and and, and and things like that, man, because they had nothing to say about the A side guy, nothing. There was nothing exciting about him. But the only thing they could talk about was him getting knocked out in the first round, his last fight. Yeah, he did. He was coming off a knockout before you said. Yeah. So, man, what do you uh, what do you think we can do, man, to clean the yeah. to to clean the sport up? Because I know fighters fighters like yourself, they train yeah. hard. Yes, day in, day out, yes, they sacrifice family, kids, you know, to, to try to live out their dream. And then you get in there and then you got a judge who could just yeah. take it all from you. Ain't ran a mile. He ain't cut yeah. nine pounds. He ain't did yeah. nothing but just a, yeah. uh, he can take all your hard work away because somebody said this A side yeah. can't lose. Yeah. Exactly. We got $100,000 into this fighter. Yeah. He can't lose. Like, that's some bullshit, yeah. man. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. And they, they, they ruining. And then they do these things for these fighters that will never be world champion. Right. These fighters will never be champion, man. You get, you already know, you know, uh, y'all, because it's a few fighters on my box rec, A side, B, they never fought again. I ended people's career. They, I don't know what happened. They fought maybe once or twice after me, and it was over with. So all that money you put into this guy, all these judges you. What was it for? Right. You know what I'm saying? If you wasn't going to push this guy to be the next, you know what I'm saying, big champion. So, you know. Uh, what's another fight? What's, what's another fight you felt like they they got oh, you on man. besides the last one? Because uh, the last one, you was uh, whose undercard was that? That was, uh, I'm, uh, I'm so sorry. That was. Um, it's all right if you don't remember. They did you out of line on that card. Zapata, yeah. Zapata. Yeah, Zapata, okay. sorry. Okay. Man, I be, I fight and I leave, man. I don't even stay for fights, man. man. <laughs> I mean, how does that, knowing they took it from you, like, you know you beat this dude. Yeah. You know you beat him. And yeah. the judge has just gifted this motherfucker yeah. a win. Like, what, it, rock him back to the locker room. Man, what are your it hurts, thoughts, man? man. It hurts. I can't lie, man, because I, I put it all out there, man. It, it really, it's a very discouraging feeling, man. But I feel like, you know, when you do stuff like that to people, man, you know, I feel like, you know, I feel like, man, something you, you can't you can't prosper from doing wrong. Like these judges, man, do these things, man. And I guarantee you, like, you know, especially when it's highway robbery, man, and you, you taking robbery. something from somebody that earned it. man, I feel like they're going to get karma. You're going to get karma for doing that to somebody that worked hard, was was innocent in the ring, man. And, and, and you know, I feel like, man, like, you you can't prosper in life doing something like that to people, man. So, 
you know, it, it, I feel like, man, it's going to be something deeper than boxing when you do – it's because you've taken something from somebody. Who put in a whole bunch of work, They put in the work, too. that sacrifice, that Crazy. done all these things just to – for this moment right here, you know what I'm saying? Dang, man. I, man, yeah. we got to clean this damn sport up, Absolutely. man. I got I got partners like my homie Ryan Allen right here, man, who, who put their life on the line. Absolutely. You feel me? And once you put your life on the line for something, it should be made the best man win, not what judge got paid. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Let me say that again. When you put your life on the line for something, it should be the best man win, not what judge got paid. You feel me? Because all them L's, bro, that's yeah. taking yeah. food off your table. Absolutely. You feel me? Absolutely. The more L's on your record, mm -hmm. the, the less likely they the look less. at you for a fight. Exactly. You feel me? But, exactly. like, you know, because I done been on the business side of it. So mm -hmm. I understand, but I don't understand when it comes to fucking these fighters. You feel me? Because mm -hmm. the big wigs up top, yeah, they, they throwing yeah. the money down and they watching mm -hmm. it unfold. But you exactly. got people in your position who out here bread, water, and meat. If yeah. I don't fight, I don't yeah. eat. Exactly. You feel me? So exactly. for them to take stuff away from y'all, mm -hmm. man, that shit is yeah. that shit baffles me, bro. It need to be one sanctioning yeah. body for boxing. One sanctioning body, man. And one I just govern. Don't, I've never understood, man. You got a fighter even on the B side that's so good, that's beating guys, man. It's like they gift who they want to give. Even though I'm not known like that, why wouldn't you want to work with a fighter so good? Like, damn, this dude was better than we expected. You hear how they talking about me and how, mm -hmm. how I'm moving and how I'm rocking, despite of you calling me last minute. And this dude done been in camp for four months. And I'm, you know what I'm saying? Y'all called me two minute. weeks ago or a week ago. Like, when, when I fought Robizi Ramirez, um, that was a five-day notice. Five-day notice, man. And, no, it's just like, and... I, and I truly feel like if I had to be quite transparent and honest, man, yeah, that was on. the only blemish on my record where you could, you, you, okay, you might have lost split decision or maybe even a draw, man. I got dropped in the second round, got up, finished. Man, I was, and I won a few rounds, man. Like he couldn't finish me. And Robizi was putting dudes out, he was putting people out, man. And I'm like, man, that was probably the only one where I just was a look. Like, five, like, really, like, because we kept negotiating back and forth, like, as to why. Because I tried to get him eight rounds, man. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, if I can get him to a place where he uncomfortable, it's going to be, I can land something land on him. Something man. On yeah, him. man. But it, it sucked that I even got to think like that, on, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm coming in so late, man. And, you know, and that was, when I fought him, I hadn't fought in almost three years. Man. Yep, that was a Friday notice, and I had been off almost three years, man. When I fought him, man. yeah. So, so with all the with all the trials and tribulations, man, and everything you've been through, what's next? Like man. I know you, I know you. Before we started recording, you was like, yeah. man, you've been around boxing for a yeah. minute. You just needed to chill, yeah. unwind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But knowing everything you've been through, what's mm -hmm. what's making you pick up and get right back in the gym man and get at it. Th th this is just my passion my love man i'm i'm only 31 years old man i, I so i still feel like man i got at least i ain't never been knocked out or cut so as of right now he ain't man, never been I, hurt the only blemishes he got is y'all robbing the homie. I, that's it that's man. the only that's blemishes it, my homie man. got that's bro. it man. he ain't been dropped he ain't been cut he ain't yeah. been knocked out dropped yeah, you feel yeah. what i'm saying I've been dropped, got up, but I ain't never been sleep on the canvas. Right. You know, I ain't never been knocked out, man. So that's, you know, um, man, I just feel like, man, these next, uh, I feel like I got like at least till I'm 40, 40. if I want to, man, because I, I take yeah. care of my body, man. I take care of myself, man. But I'm, I'm chasing that world championship down, man. There's been a lot of uh, boxers in the sport that they don't talk about that had a comeback career out of this world from yeah. out, out this world man or orlando salido being one of them man yeah, yeah. He is came back and beat uh lomachenko you know what i'm saying and, and held the belt for three years man it, it nothing is impossible man nate campbell man he yeah. became world champion at 35 years old you know what i'm saying nothing is impossible in this sport man and just I, I just gotta keep grinding knocking on doors man but i definitely want to just try to go build my record up some man and you know, uh, and then just 
only way to do it is to just go back out there and, and, and out there. upset some guys, man. That's yeah. it. That's what my life is, man. These promoters be trying to trap fighters in, 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 in terrible contracts, man. And by the way, I've had every major promotional company on the table for me. Golden Boy tried to sign me. Top Rank tried to sign me. Mayweather Promotions tried to sign me, man. It just wasn't. God didn't make it go the way it was supposed to go. And if I'm feeling uncomfortable, you're not making me yeah. feel comfortable with what I'm you reading or what there. you're telling me. I'm not going to sign it. For sure. So, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, so I'm just going to build my record up, man, and, and, and try to get back out there, man. To, uh, oh, we will. Yeah. We will. Uh, walk some stuff. You know, yeah, you so will. You will, ladies and gentlemen. down. I got Ryan Allen right here, man. One of the coldest 122 pounders you're going to ever see in the game. And he coming back for everything that's his. You feel me? And everybody that robbed him, I'm coming to rob y'all. You feel me? And that's just what we do, doing, baby. This is the Main Event Podcast. Make sure y'all like and subscribe. Ryan, thank you for coming, Yes, sir. Man. Thank you so much. We're going to do so this much. again. We're going to follow the homie's Absolutely. career because he will be world champion, man. Thank you. Until next time.